who walked around the queue to the top of the line and just handed over his passport to the officer. At that moment, the whole queue find it knee-deep in game theory. So naive the passengers of my flight, me included, became victims. And the legal representative of uh, native establishment transformed to aggressor. So all of us were waiting that authorities would stop him, say him no, would return him to the end of the queue. Nothing happened. So they just sent his passport and he worked with no hindrance. So let me explain you on this small example how it works in conflict in this situation, how it works conflict in this situation. Uh, how it works conflict here. Yes. So victims individually and nervously thinking, oh aggressor is much stronger than me. If I will speak out first, I will have problems. Let's avoid them. And what about aggressor? He is convinced that nobody from the floor won't dare to speak up. And the authorities, like always, they will be busy. And what about the authorities? They just look up from their work and absent mindedly say, what, what does it happen? So does someone have any problem? And the uh, funny thing that in the queue was just one man who took a stand and expressed his indignation. He was from America, actually. Uh, yes, uh, it didn't get any results, so no results. But an interesting thought came to my mind. What if everyone followed his example? What if everyone took out their smartphones and started filming it? What if everyone walked past the aggressor seat in the plane, saying, shame on you? What if just someone shared this story with media and TV? Would such behavior repeat? Would he risk repeating this? So, and I think here we have something very important to understand about bullying, about this day-to-day, -day, absolutely casual example. So, in the underneath of bullying process lies the persuasion of the aggressor that no one from the victims will speak out, that no one from authorities will interfere. So he has no threats at all. And such things as kindness, morality, conventions of civilization are just the words. Words from previous Britain Ostrakat. And to him, the real world is much closer to the brutal reality of Lord of the Flies. And this world belongs to the strong. So this is the most important problem about bullying. But unfortunately, bullying is not just a casual case in the line before passport control. It's a shocking, absolutely shocking phenomenon which can break human lives. So let me share with you some statistic which was collected by Do Something Org initiative. They are from America, but they are quite global. So look at the first fact. 3.2 million students are victims of bullying. 3.2 million is 10% more than the whole population of city here. I have one more shocking fact for you. Here it is. Everyone in this audience is responsible for it. So the thing is that victim and aggressor are not the only participants in bullying situation. Bystanders are also involved. So everyone here is bystander, as a parent, as a peer, as an educator. So all of us who can easily say, this is not my fight, this is not my friend, this is not my problem. So let me show you the role of bystanders on example from game theory. Look, they are 
bystanders. So, in 1938, before World War II, Germany, let's say the bully, invaded Austria and Czech Republic, let's say the victims, and England and France, our bystanders, applied the policy of appeasement. What does that mean? They agreed to give aggressors what they want in the hope it would stop further threats. What do we have at the end? Humanity, less than in one year, entered the most bloody war in history. So, what can this example teach us in the sense of bullying? It's impossible to stop aggressor, it's impossible to stop bullying, allowing him to do what he wants, giving him what he wants to get. He will demand more, making sure that bystanders will keep silent. He will choose another victim, who it will be, how do you think? It will be former bystander. All of us here are bystanders, therefore we are potential victims. So, and I think this is the first issue which we need to understand in the sense of gay theory. Today we are bystanders. We will stay aside tomorrow, we can be victims. So, let's turn this page. You know, bullying is banned everywhere. So, let's just imagine that group, like here, decided to control aggression and ban bullying. I have a great historical example for you. About 1960s, the humanity was scared with the possibility of Third World War. So, people understand that usage of nuclear, chemical, biological weapon have absolutely unpredictable consequences. And they agreed to reduce, to reduce its amount. Did it stop international aggression? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, no. Words just transform from open to proxy form. This is the form when aggressor use the victims to destroy each other. So, wars like in Ethiopia, Somalia, Mozambique, Angola, Vietnam, Afghanistan show clearly that where there is a will, there is always a way. So, dear educators, dear authorities, bans and punishment, it's a few tricks, but they treat just symptoms, not the roots of the problem. Please just remember it. So, we need to go deeper. To find the solution, we need to go deeper. And just for your public on this image, <laughs> but this one was uh, told by my favorite game theorist, who also came up with this great solution for avoiding aggression. So, despite to his uh, advanced age, he passionately loves hiding. And one day, he and his grandson were in the wild hills of California, and they encountered a huge bear on the bus. A huge bear. The one like this. So, the chances for the 80-year-old professor to escape were slim to none. Yeah, correct. It's an English. Slim to none. But they were not going to run. Never show your back to the animal, he said to his grandson. When animals see your back, you become their prey. So they just froze and waited until bear went out, apparently decided to have another noble prize winner for lunch. And here we have a very important conclusion from the theory. So it's not the aggressor who makes us victim. We ourselves make us victim. By accepting aggression, by consenting with keeping silence, by avoiding problems. So the best recipe is following. 
Unfortunately, we don't have the recipe, but it's very clear. Stand up for yourself. This is the main recipe for, from game theory. For all in this audience, for all who are suffering from bullying, just stand up for yourself. So, I just want to highlight three principles, three issues, which I ask everyone to follow. Never be a silent bystander. Don't believe in bans and punishment. And never turn back to the problems. And at the end of my speech, I just want to share with you a real story from the life of Muhammad Ali, famous champion. Let's look at him. So, when he was a kid, he was bullied. And bullies took away his bike, which forced him to ask police for help. And what advice have he got from police? First, learn boxing. Then you will get your bike back. Stand for yourself. Thank you.